All right, it is Thursday evening. John Giles is with us on the line. How are you keeping, John? I'm good, Nathan. Thank you. So not much actual football to talk about at the moment, but uh, transfer window and the transfer speculation is on overdrive at the moment. Most of it's centering around Declan Rice, and it yes. looks as though he's heading to Arsenal. They've agreed a £105 million pound deal uh, yeah. for the West Ham midfielder. Manchester City were in the mix. It always felt, though, that Arsenal were ahead of them. Uh, how much of a game-changer is it potentially that he's gone to Arsenal instead of City? Well, it was a big choice for him, uh, Nathan. It's it's uh, it's very difficult to, to know. But, but, you know, you say this time of the season, Nathan, just to go off a little bit, it's probably, apart from the run into the season, the end, this is probably the the, the most important part. You know, you can see you have. This is the team that's going to play for you next season, and there's big choices to be made. Uh, you see, with City, there's a couple of players gone. He's trying to get uh, Rice in, didn't get him. I think that'll be a big loss for him. Mm. Uh, I think he's he's going to West Ham. I, I don't know why. Uh, I think from from a football point of view, I would imagine that City would be the better place to go. But there again, he you know he lives in London, and probably the family's in London. I don't know. I don't know why, but uh, I think. City have slipped up there, Nathan. To be honest, you're a big fan of of Rice. Um, what do you think he brings to that Arsenal midfield? Um, well, he's a very, very he's a, he's a good athlete to start with. He covers the ground brilliantly, uh, Nathan. Uh, he's obviously has a good attitude. I don't think he's a schemer of uh, you know the the, the the highest level. It's uh, I think it's the way he does most jobs rather than uh, getting on the ball and creating a lot of chances and that. He covers the ground. He gets back well. He defends well. He gets forward well, uh, and he's just a good all-round player with a good attitude. Uh, he's not a great passer of the ball. He's, he's good at most things he does without being great but but a good all round player that will, will do his stuff every week for you cover the ground uh, and just do a good honest job mm. I think he'd be ideal for City uh, well he's probably ideal for a lot of clubs but City are uh, you know uh, Arsenal haven't done it yet City are up there they've won the treble this year uh, I think it'd be a great cl- t- team to come into from his point of view um, but I think he would, I, I admire the way Artet is going about his business Nathan he's spending money you know he, he's got Rice in uh, which is a huge huge uh, player for him mm. you know I, I think he needed to do that and get it from the board Arteta having the season they had last season uh, to, to get um uh, Declan Rice in and he got Havertz in hasn't he from Chelsea as well Yeah. so he has to build up that team if he's going to compete with, with Manchester City he's got to build that team up and I think uh, he, so far he's been given a, the backing by the, the owners or directors now the Havertz deal came as a surprise to a lot of people and a lot of questions as to where he'll play but maybe you've just touched upon it there that we looked at Arsenal at the end of last season they ran out of steam they didn't have the backup to come in to give Jesus a rest, to give Odegaard a rest. That actually maybe Havertz is just somebody who plays a lot of games, uh, may not have a definite position in the starting eleven, but suddenly improves their backup massively. Yeah, they need a squad. Everybody needs a squad now. And we saw it last year for Manchester City. You know, the, the, the huge squad, they were able to put players in, give players a rest. Uh, and I think the, the, the squad they had was a major reason why they won uh, the, 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 well particularly the league because they were 10 points behind uh, Arsenal at one stage but the World Cup helped them in many ways Nathan in my opinion because they had they, they could cope with the squad they had with the amount of pl- teams well players they had away in the World Cup and players that came back uh, I think that's when Arsenal really fell down they, I think they got tired they didn't have the squad to, to go with the amount of matches that need to be played after the World Cup City had that squad and, and made full use of it Nathan in my opinion the fact they're getting these deals done does it give you some confidence that maybe Arsenal can actually improve on last season yeah 
Yeah, City still have a big squad, Nathan. You know, they don't seem to be getting the players that they want in. They're losing. Gundogan is gone. I think mm. Walker's gone. There's a couple of players gone. He's talking about Mario's gone. Bernardo Silva gone. I don't think he let all them go. But he's got Calvin Sil. Uh, well, the likes of Calvin Phillips to come in. Now, he's got to start doing his stuff, having come from Leeds. Foden is a ready made player, Nathan. And there's a lot they had played on the left wing. I can't think of his name. It was very, very good. So he might put the young lads in. Mm. I wouldn't be surprised if he did. Uh, I think he'd, he'll try and make one or two more signings. I think the the the, the Rice situation was a, was a bad was bad for him not to get him. I think he would have been huge for him. But he's got a lot of players there uh, that could come into the team. That one or two maybe we don't even know about. Um, but Arteta has to buy from his point of view he's got he had very very good players last year they ran out of steam and he's doing the best he can now to get players in that can help him when when he does get into that position again if and when he gets into that position it, Manchester City weren't in the mix for Declan Rice it felt for a large part of the season it always looked like it was Manchester United or Arsenal uh, the fact that City went in if, if he had gone there and maybe looking at who they might try and bring in uh into that position like, I would have from the outside looked and thought Declan Rice and Rodri were maybe very similar players would you have seen that actually the two of them would have been able to play alongside each other oh I think so uh, Rodri is, is an all round player as well but I, I think uh, Rice would I think yeah I think he would compliment him uh, he, he would cover the ground a lot better and be more adventurous than uh, Rodri does in my opinion uh, but uh, I, I think it's a big loss for Pep not mm. to get him I'd say he would be planning on him with the players that have left and that now I'd say he'd be very disappointed although he didn't seem to go in as strongly as he might have done uh, Nathan Pep in, in this particular season I mean if, if you want him that badly enough and I think he is ba- as badly needed as, as Pep would uh, imagine at that, that club um, I think he could have done more in, in this particular uh, situation yeah uh, they're going to have to bring players in with the quality of the players that are going out and he might well give the likes of Rico Lewis and Cole Palmer those you know, really talented young players more of an opportunity next season is, he, yeah, is, he is could it, do now, and it's Palmer's the lad I was thinking yeah. that was a really really good player he's got Foden to come in Phillips if he's going to do it you know he's, 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 he's pretty well covered uh, at the moment and he might make he might make a scene a, 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 a sign or two before the start of the season this is this is the big well, one of the huge parts of the season this is what you depend on we're getting the players in now Nathan so he might go maybe a couple of players on the continent that we don't know about um, I wouldn't be surprised if he signed another couple anyway Looking at some of the other potential deals and deals that have been done. So Liverpool have signed Alexis McAllister from Brighton. Yes. We saw at the end of the season a lot of fringe players, experienced players leaving the club, the likes of James Milner, who's gone to Brighton, uh, Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain, Naby Keita, players who you know maybe have struggled to get much game time this season. But you would have thought that Liverpool, with the way they've generally done business, would have gone out and signed a few more players by now. Would you be worried about the lack of depth that's there for Liverpool in midfield? I think, yeah, I'm surprised, Nathan, that they haven't done something because looking at the players that they had last year, uh, and maybe they have young players we don't know about, but I think those players would have played last season where you could say, well, they'll, they'll come into it and Joe Bologs will come into it. I don't see that. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that... Uh, they haven't gone into the, tra- the transfer market stronger than they have. McAllister's is a very good player, as we know, but I would have thought they'd, they might have signed two or three players from last season because they, they didn't do well last season, as we know. Now, you know, a few players have got older. Uh, I, I thought they would have spent a bit more in, 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 in this close season. Mm. Are there any other areas they need to, to buy in? Liverpool? Yeah. Um, no, they've enough strikers. I think you know they had a couple of lads who were injured last season. But I think I think they're they're, they're well enough strikers. Uh, we'll have to see how the defence goes next year. Van Dijk didn't have a good season. Uh, is he going to pick up? Is the players around him going to pick up? It was a very uh, meter well mixed season as we saw with Liverpool, mm. Nathan. And I, I I would have thought that they'd, they'd go into the transfer market uh, certainly a little bit heavier than they they have done. 
uh, the big story for the rest of the summer will probably surround Harry Kane and will he stay will he go Bayern Munich potentially interested will he let his contract run down uh, there's talk that he's building a, a new mansion just by Chelsea's training ground and maybe let his contract run down and he go to Chelsea next summer on a free transfer uh, the lure of potentially beating Alan Shearer's all-time Premier League record seems to be a strong one and he would like to stay in England but it does seem as though Daniel Levy won't let him sign for another Premier League club what are your thoughts on what he should do? Well, well, if I was advising him, or if it were me, I'd, I'd let my contract run out. Right? Yeah. And then you've got plenty of choices. You know, you can, you, you can always stay at Spurs if you want to, if you do a deal uh, with, with the chairman, or, or you can go, go wherever you want. Um, I, I, I never really buy into beating the goal scoring record. You don't. No. You don't think it should be something he's thinking about? No, I don't. I, I don't think it's genuine. To be honest, I mean, I, I've seen, heard it over the years. You know, the player is saying because he's going to do this, he wants to do that, and then I think when it comes to a move and and and, and the, the future of the player, and the, uh, I don't think that record would be significant in his decision, Nathan, if he wanted to go to go abroad, for example. Mm. I don't. I just. I just don't go for that. You know, uh, when you hear a lot of players, uh, I want to transfer because I want to be playing in the Champions League. You know, I never go for that either. You know, <laughs> to, to be quite honest. Uh, but uh, but but Harry Harry's been a great player for for a great uh, player for Spurs. There's no doubt about it. And the way that the, the game is at the moment, you can say, yeah, I'll play out my season. Um, I know if it were me, that's what I would do. Where I was advising them, I'd say, yeah, play out your season. Do your stuff, score your goals, and you're a free agent. And if you want to stay at Spurs, then you come to a deal with Spurs. If you want to go away, you can go wherever you want. So that's uh, that's the way that's the way I would see it. But he's been a great player for Spurs, there's no doubt. I mean, whether he beats Alan Shearer's record or not, you can't take away what he's done for Spurs. Uh, and he's dealing with it with it with a big businessman there, Nathan, with the, the chairman, as we know. So, um, but he's he's got the the, the the ace cards in his hand. If he lets his, his, his contract run out, he's, he's, he can do what, exactly what he wants. He can r- sign again for Spurs, or he can go wherever he wants. It's a, and that's, that's a great position to be in. It's a bit of a makey-uppy record anyway, the Alan Shearer record. He did score like 20-something goals in the top flight in the old First Division before it just became the Premier League. Yeah, it, 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 I, I, lads like to break records, Nate. But... The, but now, I'm going on my own my own take on it what I know of players uh, that, that, that records are there to be broken and they'd rather be winning trophies than getting records and certainly uh, you know in a financial situation uh, it, 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 it wouldn't be that important to them they would like it there's no doubt Harry Kane would like it but there's other the players have beaten the, the, the record and haven't, haven't been necessarily great players you know Alan Shearer was a brilliant player he scored a lot of players did it Nathan but if they want to go abroad if they want to go to a different club uh, it wouldn't stop them the news this evening is that Manchester United have agreed a fee with Chelsea for Mason Mount about £55 million and maybe another £5 million added on uh, what are your thoughts on Mount's potential to improve United? Well, he, he's, he's a, he, he hasn't really done it yet, Nathan, but he's a very, very promising player. But I must say, I feel sorry for Ten Hag to be in the position he's in, Nathan. They're still trying to sell the club, aren't they? Yeah. You know, I mean, how can a manager get whatever he wants in the club and get it settled down and get it done? I think he's in a dreadful position. And uh, like he's getting mounted in. It looks like he's getting mounted in. But you don't know... We don't know what he really wants in there. He, he, he won't be whatever he wants, really wants. He won't be allowed to do it until this club is sold. And even if it's when it's sold, he might not be able to do what he wants to do. I think it's a dreadful position for the club to be in, and particularly for the manager to be in. He doesn't know where he is in the club. So you'd be worried about United if, and it does look as though it is unlikely. The deal, the takeover deal is going to be done before the end of the transfer window before the season starts you'd be worried about United's ability to get the players in that they need to close the gap on City 
Well, it's not. It's it, it's it's a dreadful position for a manager to be in, Nathan. Does he have the money? Does he not have the money? Are they going to sell the club? They don't want. Maybe they want to be spending because the, the, it, it takes away the, the, the money from selling all that nonsense. Mm. As from a manager's point of view, the manager wants to be settled in, know what exactly he has to buy, uh, and be given a budget or whatever way they want to do it. But it's just a mess. A total mess, and Manchester United should shouldn't be in a position, or no club, but particularly Manchester United shouldn't be in a position where, from the manager's point of view, where he doesn't really know where he's going. It's it's outrageous, really, Nathan. To be in, to be honest. It's strange all that's going on at Chelsea as well. Obviously, there's the Saudi Arabian link and a lot of their players are heading to play in Saudi Arabia. The likes of N'Golo Kante leaving the club, Koulibaly, uh, the goalkeeper Mendy, Ziyech leaving as well, now Mason Mount. They obviously had a very bloated squad with the amount of players they've ended up signing over the last year. Uh, it's a very, They're probably the one team and probably the most difficult team to figure out what exactly they're going to look like at the start of the season. <laughs> Impossible, name. It's impossible to, to to figure out what they did during this season. Hmm. I think Mr. Bowley has been at the at the heart of all the all these situ buying the players in and that name. Now he's got Potticino there now, hasn't he? Yeah. Now the, we'll see how long he lasts because if he's if, he, if he's not allowed to do what he what he should be doing, uh, and Mr. Bowley starts interfering again, I think he'd be out of there straight away. You can't you can't run a club and manage a club. Uh, the way uh, sorry Chelsea have been going on, it's outrageous, uh, Nathan. You know, the, 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 this guy is, is is a businessman. He's a great businessman. He's bought the club. He's a lot of money. Uh, it doesn't mean he's an expert at football. But looking at the, the the way he behaves, you certainly think that he does fancy himself as being an expert on football. That's why he's got the manager in there. I mean, it, it's turned out to be a mess. They've had far too many players that they that that, that he bought in. They're trying to get rid of some of them, and uh, Pochettino has a big job. It'll be very interesting to see see how he gets on. I'm sure that he was in a position to to demand the, the, the what he wanted at the club. Mm. But it's a different story when when the manager gets in there, and he's got somebody like Mr. Bowley around. They don't they don't listen to many people, Nathan. And it needs to be done. Chelsea been a mess, a total mess, in the last twelve months. Do you think Pochettino's so good that if he does get the squad that he wants, gets rid of the players that he doesn't want around, and gets the few players in that he feels will improve the club, that he's he's so good that actually they could push back into the top four, maybe even challenge for a title quite quickly? Well, he's, he, if, you, if you look at his, his record, it's very very good. I and mean, he did a huge job. At Spurs again with a difficult chairman, and he got them into Europe. I think he got them into the European Cup final, uh, and he wasn't allowed to spend an awful lot of money. So what he did at uh, at, at Spurs, you, you would definitely see him as a top the top manager. Now it depends what he's allowed to do at Chelsea. It, 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 when you're in a position like this as a manager, and you got somebody like Mister Bowley in and around the place, you're not allowed to do the job that you want to do. Mm. But I, I think if that happens. He'll get out straight away. I don't think he'll mess around there at all. Right. <laughs> but he deserves More. he deserves to, to be given a lot of respect and, 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 and the tools to do the job there. Yeah. I think his CV is very, very, very good. Yeah. Um, Spurs have signed James Madison today. As talk of Harvey Barnes from Leicester going to West Ham, maybe using some of that money they get from selling Declan Rice. Uh, Madison, you know, his post-match interviews, I think, have endeared him to an awful lot of people. And he has five, ten performances a season where he looks absolutely outstanding and the potential to play at that very top level. He's always just struggled with a little bit of consistency. Is he a player you look at and think, actually, he'll improve Spurs? Well, he should do. You know, players like him, you have you have to live with them. You know, you can't depend on them. And he's he's a goal scoring midfield player. He's not a midfield player at all. And he's a talented lad. Uh, I, I've never been a fan of his, uh, Nathan, to be honest, because uh, in some games you think, well, where is he? You know, is he playing? And then you hit you hit a couple of goals, fantastic goals. But you you wouldn't want to be depending your life on him. So, and I, I think he'd have to be in a really, really good side that would carry him along to be able to do some of the stuff he did. He's a very talented lad, uh, but he'd have to be carried along. To I wouldn't like to see him in a team that was having to work hard and defend and do things like that. 
you know well, he has scored his fair share of goals at Leicester in a team that has been relegated as we know he is a talented guy but he's, I think he's one of those lads you have to live with you have enough, you'd have two or three around midfield doing all the graft mm. for him to be able to do what he can do but you know that that's sometimes a team you make a team like that uh, but what I've seen him at Leicester I wouldn't like I wouldn't like my life to be dependent on him I guess we saw uh, when Leicester were at their best how well he linked up with Jamie Vardy you'd have to think if he's playing with Harry Kane and if Kane stays and that they can actually get a connection together that that should bring him on to another level well look it, it could well do if anybody that's playing with Harry Kane he's going to make a lot of goals for them and he is a talented lad alright but there's some days you're playing Nathan and you're up against it you know because you're not going to be on top all the time in any match now. And he's, I think he's one of those guys that if you're up against, really up against it in, at Liverpool or one of the other places, uh, you're not going to see much of him. But, but there again, you know, he is a goal scorer. He is a talented lad. But I'd like to see him doing a lot more in the team or as if he cared a lot more in the team than he actually does. But we'll, we'll see as we go along. Yeah. It was a lot easier, John, when you just weren't allowed to have any transfers, wasn't it? Sorry? It was, it was a lot easier when you weren't allowed to have any transfers. You were just stuck at the one club forever. Well, unless the club wanted to get, get rid of you, <laughs> Nathan, because in those days, you, in my day, I'm talking about my day now, if you signed a time, uh, uh, um, contract at 17, you were tied for that club for life. Yeah. You know, you couldn't leave unless they wanted you to leave. So you, did, you didn't have much say in the whole business, to be honest. You know, no matter how much you wanted to go, if you said to, if I was dealing with Matt Busby, I said, I want to go. So yeah, you can go. But we're not giving you any transfer. We're not, we're not paying you. You're not, you're not yeah, allowed yeah. to go. Yeah. Different world now, Nathan, because it's, it's great for the players. They can say, my contract is out. Like Harry Kane next year, we were talking early on. My contract is out now. Off I go. Can't do anything about it. Unless you want to pay me in the right way or do whatever I want to stay, uh, it's 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 a totally new new world today, but and ten hundred thousand times better for the players than it used to be. Yeah, it certainly is. No doubt about that. Uh, we'll talk more across the summer on some of these transfers. We'll get into some of the Irish deals as well. We've seen Chidozi Ogbene this week is going to be playing in the Premier League. He's signed for Luton. Darrow Shea is going to be playing in the Premier League. He's signed for Burnley. So yeah. two real positive moves. A lot of talk tonight that Nathan Collins is going to leave Wolves and he's going to sign for Brentford uh, for about £23 million, which is a huge deal as well. Yeah. Well, the more the, more the merrier, uh, Nathan, as we know. You know, the, the more players we get playing in the, in the higher leagues, the, the better the players we have at international level. And uh, that'll be brilliant for us all round. Brilliant for the players and, and brilliant for us to get into the international team, Nathan. We look yeah. forward to that.